Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life, part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about some of the appendages which are present in the cell which often helps in locomotion that is cilia and flagella. So we will see how do they help in locomotion in many different cells. So what are cilia and flagella? These names are already known to you because we have already discussed about them in many previous lessons while we were talking about different microorganisms. We have mentioned these as their locomotory organs. So it is nothing new to you. But here we will try to understand them from the perspective of a cell. So what are cilia and flagella? These are fine hair-like outgrowths of cell membrane. So from the cell membrane itself, there might be small thin outgrowths and they are termed as cilia and flagella. Now these are two different things. Cilia are those which are relatively shorter in length and flagella are the ones which are longer in length. So they are longer and bigger. So they help in movement of the cell or the surrounding fluid. So they can either help the cell to move or the cell will not move, only the surrounding fluid will move. For example, let us take the example of the sperm cell. In case of sperm cell, they have a flagella. So this is your sperm cell and this is the flagella. Now this, with the help of this flagella, the sperm cell, it, sperm cell itself moves. It is something like, uh, uh, suppose there is a ship which is moving on water. So the ship itself is moving, right? There can be another scenario where the cells are not moving, but it is helping the other substances to move. For example, the respiratory tract of human beings, which has a lot of cilia. So this cilia actually helps in moving the particles down the throat. So the cilia itself is not moving. I mean, the cilia is not making the uh, columnar epithelium cells to move, it is making the particles to move. For example, when you put a paper boat in water, the paper boat itself is not moving. It is the water which is moving and making the paper boat move. Right? So you got the difference. So in one case, the cell itself will move and in the other case, the cell will not move, but the surrounding fluid will move. So now let us quickly look at the difference between cilia and flagella. Now cilia are generally shorter in length, whereas flagella is quite long. Many exist per cell when we talk of cilia, whereas in flagella, few exist. I mean, in many of the organisms, there is just one flagella. And there are organisms where more than one flagella exists, but they do not exist in hundreds or two hundreds. They are lesser in number. Cilia, very fast movement. Whereas in flagella, the motion is wave-like. So the way each of them moves, it is again different. The mode of movement is quite different. We will not get into the mechanism of how cilia moves or how flagella moves, but they are different. In cilia, they move very fast in a rotatory way. Whereas in case of flagella, it is a wave-like motion. Cilia is generally seen in eukaryotic cells, whereas flagella is seen in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So let us look at this example. This is a paramecium which, which has cilia all over its body. So you see they are short in length, but they are many in number. Whereas if you look at this prokaryotic cell, a bacterium cell, they have just one flagella which is long, but lesser in number. Only one exists. So these are some of the differences between cilia and flagella, but still we are talking about cilia and flagella under the same topic because the internal structure of both of them are the same. Both of them help in movement. So that is why they have been grouped together under the same topic. Let us now talk about their structure. Cilia and flagella are structurally the same, as I said. So they have a plasma membrane an axoneme which is the central so this axoneme the plasma membrane is this membrane the outermost membrane and then the entire internal thing is axoneme now axoneme in turn consists of the central core this is the central core which again consists of nine pairs of doublets of peripheral microtubules so it consists of one central core that is one thing it consists of nine pairs of doublets of peripheral microtubules. We all know what is microtubules. They are made up of the protein tubuli, 
vestibular structure. So here a cross section is displayed. Let us suppose this is your flagella, right? So if you take only one cross section, the cross section will look like this. So these circular things which you see, they are basically the microtubules. Just the, you are seeing it from top. So microtubules will be a cylinder like structure which is made up of these proteins, tubulines. So when you see it from above, you will just see this circle made up of the tubulin protein. So you see it is made up of there are nine pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine pairs of doublet of peripheral microtubules. So each pair has a doublet. So nine pairs of doublet peripheral microtubules exist because these microtubules exist towards the periphery. It also consists of one pair of central mi microtubule. So at the center, if you see, there is one pair. Now these two central microtubules, so this kind of arrangement is known as 9 plus 2 arrangement. That is nine pairs of microtubules towards the periphery and one pair of microtubules towards the central. So this one pair is, exists separately, one and one. So that is nine, this is nine plus two, one and two. The central microtubules are connected by bridges. So this is your bridge. This green colored structure is the bridge. These are your peripheral microtubules. These are your central microtubules. Central sheath is connected to peripheral microtubules by radial spoke. So if you see the central microtubules are covered by a central sheath. This red colored structure which is shown here that is the central sheath and this central sheath how is it connected to the peripheral microtubules with the help of these radial spokes. So there are so many radial spokes for each pair of uh, microtubules you have a radial spoke which connect it to the central sheath. So this is the internal structure of cilia and flagella. So the internal structure is same for both of them. So just imagine there are so many things inside the thin cilia or inside the thin flagella. Interesting. Okay. So now let us quickly look at the significance of cilia and flagella. They act as organs of locomotion. For example, in paramecium, cilia acts as locomotory organ. They also help in movement of materials through pathways. So they, the cell does not move itself, but it allows other materials to move through certain paths. For example, the respiratory tract in case of human beings. We have what kind of cells are present there? Ciliated columnar epithelium. So the ciliated columnar epithelial cells, they do not move themselves, but they allow the movement of the mucus through that respiratory tract. Flagellar movement helps again in movement of cells. So locomotion is one important uh, significant property of cilia and flagella. Ciliary movement help to move, move mucus out of air passages leading to lungs as I said before also. So now that we have discussed all the cell, cellular parts of an eukaryotic organism, now let us quickly differentiate between the plant cell and animal cell because I told you right that all eukaryotic cells are not exactly identical and the most common example is the plant cell and the animal cell. So let us have a quick comparison. Plant cells are larger in size than animal cells. Cell wall is present in plant cells to provide that additional structural support which is absent in animal cells. Vacuoles in plant cells are very prominent. They are very big but they are lesser in number. They occupy almost 90% of the cell in many cases. Whereas vacuoles are smaller in size in animal cells. They can be present. They might not be present. If they are present, they are generally small in size. Plastids are again present only in plant cells because they impart color, they contain pigments which impart color to the plant parts and they are completely absent in animal cells. However, there is one exception to this which is euglena. So euglena is the only animal cell which has plastids. Golgi apparatus is present in both plant and animal cells but they are distributed in the form of small particles in case of plant cells and often termed as dictyosomes. Whereas in animal cells, they are one single structure which looks quite complex and prominent and they are termed as Golgi apparatus. Sometimes they are also called as Golgi bodies. 
so this is how they look different from each other so i don't think i need to explain the structure once again because we have already studied each and every cell organelle making use of these pictures so you all know where the organs or where the cell organelles lie in each of them so for your reference you can just have a look and revise whatever we have studied so far you can just try to pick any of these organelles and try to revise okay what is its function how is its structure so that will be a kind of revision for you so with this we are going to end our discussion on eukaryotic cells so we have we are done with almost most of the chapter because eukaryotic cell has everything so now we will talk about prokaryotic cell Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.